the in these eight areas you talked about? Uh, I have a cluster of questions, I guess, for uh, Captain Shearer relative to the naming of some of these features. Uh, we've been mentioning Tsiolkovsky. The Russians apparently are making uh, some pretty nice propaganda out of their moon discoveries. I'm wondering when we will, and of course one of the things, as I understand it, is that the prerogative for naming features lies with the discoverer. Who is the discoverer? When will we get around to naming them, and what is the procedure for going to the International Astronomical Union for approval, and did the Russians get approval from the IAU? That's a cluster. The, uh, you're right that the IAU is the official body which provides uh, the official blessing on the naming of uh, the backside features, or any lunar features, I guess, that are named hereafter. Uh, I am not clear as to the extent to which the Russians did go through the uh, procedures as we understand to be the official ones. Uh, I, as I recall, they uh, submitted a, a, a number of names, a large number of names, and certainly all of these were not accepted, but it may be that uh, a few were. I, I just can't answer that part. Now, are there any that are more scientific than the others, and could you dis discuss what, uh, from the scientific point of view, uh, you would uh, be able to learn uh, uh, after the uh, man lunar landing on these uh, sites that were mentioned, potential sites? Um. I'll say grading the degree of scientificity of a site is a difficult problem. Uh, there are different things that can be learned at different sites. If one wants to study lunar volcanic rocks, one would go to one of these sites like Demazo. If you want to understand something about the impact process, then you would go to something like Mustang Sea. Uh, in other words, we're saying that you can't go to any one place on the moon and find out all about it. But if we went to a variety of such places, then we could indeed come up with a variety of phenomena. Two of the favorite ones are Copernicus, which is a very large impact structure and would get you deep within the moon's crust so you could see things that had happened not only in the recent past but in the far distant past. Another favorite one is the Aristarchus Plateau because this is a beautiful volcanic field. So you would see a variety of volcanic phenomena. So let's say that there are each one of the sites that I described would give you a best look at a particular kind of thing, and you might want to put these in, in a priority order, say if I could only see one, well I might choose that one. Uh, one of the tasks that we have is to evaluate what can be learned in the various ellipses from the different sites, because these offer a variety of features in each of them. And we have not yet completed these studies, but they will be forthcoming over the next few months. Now that we have selected the ellipses, we'll start looking at them in detail and try to rank them in order of what kinds of things could be found if one went to one or another of them. Uh, we are going to find very interesting things in all of those sites uh, at the level of our knowledge now. Someday uh, in the future, going to Copernicus or something else will uh, hopefully be possible, but it, we don't have to go there in order to ask ourselves interesting questions about the lunar surface when we get there. Uh, the other point is that during any given attempt, we have to be prepared for at least three different sites faced across the moon. So uh, this is going to mix the purely scientific priority quite a bit. Even if you were able to rank one site relative to another uh, at the beginning, the operational constraints demand that you have not one but three. Uh, Dr. Rock. We uh, want to find the best place there. Uh, if the moon had been uh, smooth in the middle, uh, more smooth, uh, I think it would have been nicer, but the flexibility in the system is, is sufficient in our judgment. Here. Why did you decide to change your minds on uh, sur uh, this surveyor, not to go into Sinus Medi? I think Oren might prefer to comment on that. Sinus Medi uh, was considered along with the site chosen for surveyor. Uh, we'd like to uh, spread our landings as rapidly as possible to get a broader coverage of the moon, but uh, Sinus Medi has uh, some drawbacks for the next surveyor mission, which relate to uh, extending the la landing capability off vertical to a very uh, shallow approach, about 
45 degrees from vertical. Uh, it would involve uh, uh, a, an attitude on approach which wasn't quite as good for, from the uh, tracking and data acquisition standpoint during the terminal descent. Our 210-foot dish is not in operation this month, and we would have probably had to switch from one antenna to the other. And a few other engineering considerations of this sort uh, made it desirable to, to schedule this mission for the intermediate site and a subsequent mission to catch the Sinus Midi area. Any further questions, gentlemen? Thank you very much. If any of them. It's uh, three three nine. Three five. Three eleven. Just a second. Twenty three degrees west. Three nine. 23 west, 3 degrees south. Is that the ocean of storms generally? Yes. Okay. Right, they will boil that down to 3, is that correct? No, uh, we will use a subset of 3 out of the 8 during each month. In other words, in one month we might use one, three, and five, and the next month, so to speak, we might use two, four, and six, or something of that sort. Could you be a little bit more detailed as to why you have to have three sites? Yes, the reason we want three sites is to give us the proper lighting uh, during the landing. The sun advances across the moon at uh, a rate of about 13 degrees per day, so that if we have a hold in the Apollo mission of a couple of days, the lighting angle will change by, say, 26 degrees. We want to keep the lighting such that we get nice shadows on any obstacles that will light those shadows up or uh, make them more obvious. So that uh, as we go into holds in the mission, we will tend to move the site in order to keep the lighting constant. 